Welcome to day three. Today we are going to identify, define, and select the different types of relationships. So what are these relationships? Well, there's actually different categories of relationships. Let's define the highest level of relationships or what we call synergistic relationships. Then we have independent relationships. Then we have command and control relationships. Then we have dysfunctional or passive aggressive relationships. And then we have indifferent relationships. Let's kind of describe each of them as we go up from the bottom. An indifferent relationship, and I don't even know if it's a relationship because you could say indifference is if something good happens to you, I don't care. If something bad happens to you, I don't care. It's, it's having no concern about uh, other people at all. That's indifference. A passive aggressive relationship is either an adversarial relationship or an enemy relationship. Now an adversarial relationship is occurs when I <laughs> I I want I I want to win at your expense. Okay? So it's uh, it's uh, you know I'm I'm trying to beat Beat you, okay? So would this be like gossip, the spreading the rumors, uh, that kind of stuff? Is that what you're talking about? You bet. As a matter of fact, passive aggressive relationships happen to do with when, when somebody does something bad to you, you don't, you may not do something directly to them at the moment, but you get even. You let the air out of their tires or something of that nature. Now, an enemy relationship is different because it's no longer about winning and losing. Actually what it is is you redefine winning as making you lose worse. Hmm. See in an enemy relationship I'm willing to stay in the situation and get pummeled if it allows me to stay in and hit back at you harder. See I've seen in situations like this I'll stay in a bad relationship just so I can still get my digs into you. Enemy relationship, it'll be fun in a, in a sit-down situation to demonstrate the difference between these, but de enemy relationships are horrible, and they happen. Sometimes, uh, for example, bad divorces go from adversarial to enemy relationships, okay? Uh, command and control are oftentimes thought of as stomper, boss. As long as I'm in charge, you'll do what I say, you know? And the stompy is the submissive part. So command and control is a hierarchical relationship where uh, you see the world of those people who are above you to whom you're submissive or people below you to whom you are, you can monitor and push around. So, and so I think sometimes, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, people tend to think that and maybe getting coached that it's okay for a coach to be in control and be the stomper and then you as a player you kind of just have to accept the role of being a, a stompy or if you decide that you won't allow that then all of a sudden you seem to be a rebellious volleyball player and, and is this why this doesn't work is it because yeah. it's functioning here as a matter of fact we help we need to help people understand that being a stomper a boss or a bully is never acceptable. We have to operate. We'll learn another concept later called adult parent, adult and child mode. And uh, and we'll get into that later. The, the next relationship above that are what we call uh, independent, that's colleague and associates. Well, a teach another coach from another team is your colleague, an associate. So that's a type. Now, we, we're not really looking to have colleague associate relationships within the, it, within the club here, we're closer than that because you see we want synergistic relationships here. And synergistic relationships mean there's different types. You, have, you want to be an advocate. An advocate is a person who will come out and be your sponsor, who will who'll cover your back, who will be there for you when you need them. A sponsor, a, a another, another level of, of, of 
synergistic relationship is what we call friend, where you have a social connection, where you enjoy being with each other. Partner relationship is maybe a friend, but it's also another higher level where you have common objectives that you're committed to reach together. And so you're defined by your commitment to reach those goals together. And a professional soulmate relationship is where one where you're bound by common values, mission, vision, where, you, where you, you're in this to achieve extraordinary, extraordinary results together. So it's more than that. It's, it's truly an intimate relationship. And so is it possible to have many professional soulmate relationships? Can you have that with multiple people? Yes. Matter of fact, if, if, if it was me, I would want every parent, every player, and coach all to have center district relationships that they feel that they're professional, that they're professional soulmates. It's awesome. That they're bonded together. That we're in this together. We're inseparable. That's great. The reason I say important relationship is any relationship you can walk away from is not that important and the, the evaluation would be very negative. But with, with every relationship, uh, you, you can look first, the first thing to look at is the commitment to the relationship. And that is defined by the level of dedication demonstrated to the relationship. Is that very high or is it very low? Shared values, the degree to which the standards that govern decisions and actions are well matched. Is that very high or very low? Unity of purpose, the, the commonality of direction and goals. Is it very high or very low? Mutual respect, the level of regard and consideration given to one another. Very high, very low. Fulfilled expectations, the level to which positive expectations are met. High or low. Fulfilling communication, the degree to which each is heard, understood, and validated. Is it high, is it low? The level of receptivity for, for information, that's openness to information. The level of receptivity for information coming from one another. Is that high or low? And the last one is personal fulfillment. The level of satisfaction derived from the relationship. Now the thing I'd like to suggest to you here, you can sometimes have very important relationships. Daughter, child, brother, sister. And you can come through and you can profile this and see while while it's a, you love each other, there's certain parts that are not where you want them to be. So this is both a diagnostic tool and a tool which you can use to start, know where to start fixing and resolving the relationship. So your assignment is to go through and take one or more important relationships and try profiling.